Hey guys, how's it going? Richard here with Alien Bros, and I hope you all had an amazing 4th of July. Today I have some awesome UFO sightings to share with you, and I want to say though that when the 4th of July rolls around and the fireworks start going off, we always see an influx of fireball UFO sightings in the US, and it has been very difficult to sort through the mass amounts of fireworks sightings, but I have and I have found some awesome ones to share with you all, just like I always do. And afterwards, I have some incredible news to share with you guys that's definitely left me feeling more happy and confident than ever that we are not alone in this massive universe of ours. But more on that in a bit. First, I want to let you guys know that this video is sponsored by Finally Hair Corporation, a longtime sponsor of the channel that just became a more permanent sponsor for us. They believe in the work that we're doing here, and without their support, this content would not be possible, so please head on over to them and show them some love for helping to keep this content coming. Their link is down in the description. Alright, let's get into the UFO settings that I have for you guys today. This first one comes to us from Columbus, Montana, and was captured on July 2nd of 2020 and shows multiple objects. I counted five in total, as did the witnesses. They noticed one object as if it came out of nowhere, and then suddenly four more objects joined and remained hovering in the sky. Supposedly, the witnesses observed these airborne objects for about an hour before they eventually disappeared. They managed to take video and some more zoomed in up close photos of the objects. I'll go ahead and play you guys the clip and we could check out the photos and examine both the photos and the video afterwards, along with an enhanced version of the video since the clips are rather difficult to make out the objects in without some visual enhancements. Alright, now here it is. Fifth, fifth one. Yep. Fifth, no, there's four over there and five, one over here. It's by the sun. Those have moved quite a bit in the last five, five minutes I've been sitting here. I mean, it's not floating like a balloon. So, I mean, it should be moving if it's anything. Now, I'm sure that many of you have already considered this to likely be a case of drones being mistaken for the unknown, and before I looked at the images, I did as well. However, the close-up shots of these objects throw this explanation out the window. This is a close-up picture of one of these objects, and you can clearly see that what we're looking at here is nothing like any drone that I am aware of. They almost look transparent and in a disc shape. It's as if they're spinning and the whole object is illuminated. If this were a drone, a close-up shot of it in broad daylight would have made it apparently obvious that what we're looking at here is indeed a UAV. However, there is no sign of anything at all that resembles a drone here. In fact, the only real decipherable things we see with these objects are the shape and the certain colors illuminating from them. One of these objects doesn't even have lights on, which is illegal for a drone not to have. The lights appear to be almost as if they could simply be a prism effect reflecting off of the object's surfaces, creating colors that the object doesn't normally have. The way the colors are coming off of the object don't really look like they're purposeful illuminations to me, but rather a reflection of a very shiny metallic surface. Now, for those of you that have a hard time seeing all of these objects in the original clip, here is the enhanced version that I mentioned earlier. As you can see, there are five of them in total and they show up far more clearly after messing with the contrast, brightness, tint, and overall enhancing the footage. So what do we have here? Well, some may want to still attempt to write this off as drones, and that's fine, I respect your opinion on it, however, I would woefully have to disagree with you at this time. I'm not saying that these objects have no explanation, but I don't find that to be a fitting one. We have no propeller type noises and no visible forms of propulsion when we examine the objects more closely. On top of that, they don't move at all. Something very hard for a drone to do since the higher in elevation you are, the more subject you are to the forces of the wind, which would make something like this extremely difficult for a drone since they're really not that large and they use propellers to stay afloat, making them even more susceptible to the wind since the propellers will be catching the wind and causing such a light object to move in midair. That's how they stay afloat. 
These objects are far above the tree line, as we can see in the beginning of the footage, the tree is swaying in the wind, so there is 100% definitely wind present there, and it's at least strong enough to move the tree branches, and at that altitude, likely strong enough to move the drone, at least a little bit. However, no movement from these objects is apparent in the footage. Rather, all five remain entirely stagnant. It is hard to gauge their size here since they're clearly high up in the sky. If I had to guess, I'd say easily 1 to 2,000 feet up in the air if we're being conservative, which is a height that is illegal for a drone to fly at unless it is military. It certainly is not impossible for an average drone enthusiast to achieve these heights, but unless these are government used drones, which I highly doubt, then they're breaking the law, and I find it unlikely that any responsible drone owners will be flying them at such heights. Let's face it though, not everyone is a law abiding citizen, but based on the other evidence that we have, I would have to say that no, these are not drones. So what are they then? That I don't know. Could they be extraterrestrial? Maybe. I mean, the close-ups do resemble a typical flying saucer, and they do seem to have no discernible features that would give them away as being something of this world. But let's not jump the gun here and outright say that these are extraterrestrial. I'm going to say that they are unknown in UFOs in the sense of the phrase that Hynek meant it. They are unidentified. Don't be confused here though. Me calling these objects UFOs is not me saying that they are extraterrestrial, which many people seem to think I mean no matter how much I clarify that that's not what I'm saying. I am saying that they are not explained yet and may defy conventional explanation. Not that they do. My opinion though is that it possibly could indeed be ET, but I want to hear what you guys think before I make a conclusion on what I believe the witnesses captured here. A lot of you guys come up with some awesome explanations for these sightings and I always love to hear what you guys think about them. Listening to each other is how we can all collect Collectively grow as individuals and as a group, and we should always continue to grow and become smarter. That's how we beat the system and get answers to this phenomenon. We keep growing smarter. Alright, let's go ahead and get into our next sighting. It comes to us from Grand Canyon Village, Arizona, and it has made some rounds online already. It shows what appears to be a flying saucer captured on video by a group of tourists visiting the area on June 27th to 2020. It was originally reported to MUFON and has been reviewed by some other UFO researchers already, and the case number will be down in the video description for you guys to check out on your own if you would like. The object is certainly a weird one and had the group in shock when they were filming it. Some news places have tried to explain it away as a case of mass pareidolia, and normally I wouldn't say something like this, but I have to say that is the weakest and laziest attempt at debunking something like this that I could possibly think of. For those of you that don't know what pareidolia is, it is when one or more people view something such as a pattern on a known object and see something that is not there. Basically the equivalent of when you look at a Rorschach test and attempt to decipher the images within the ink blots to help a psychologist better understand what's going on in a person's subconscious. It's clearly not the case here in this footage. There is most certainly an object visible in this clip and to say otherwise is both disingenuous and very lazy journalism. It may not be extraterrestrial, but that does not mean that there is not something there. This type of laziness actually frustrates me to no end. It is why we can't get anywhere when it comes to real explanations. Why put in the work when we can call ourselves skeptics and use that as an excuse to say every little thing is explainable no matter how weak the explanation they come up with is. Absolutely ridiculous, that's what it is. Anyway, that's enough ranting from me. My apologies for that, but if there is one thing that really grinds my gears it's lazy journalism, with no research attempting to debunk something with a straw man argument. Go ahead and check out this clip and decide for yourselves what it is that the witness has captured here. I'll play an enhanced version afterwards and share some close-up images as well. Here it is. That's not a star because there's a circle in between it. Uh huh. There's a little gap. No, that's just the cloud. Huh. I can get in a video of it. Zooming in and out. So if this ever gets posted online, sorry. So after looking over the footage and zooming in on the object, you can clearly see that this object is certainly in the shape of a disc. That is not something that can be argued. 
It is more of a donut shape than a disc, but it is impossible to tell if the center is actually hollow or not. I would put my money on it being fully solid, so I'm going to stick with calling it a disc shape. Now, other researchers have said that they believe the darkness in the center is an occupant. However, I highly doubt that. Let's put some simple logic at work here. The object is obviously very high up in the sky, probably 15,000 feet bare minimum since it appears to be in line with the cloud cover if not a little bit higher. To me, it looks as if it's either in the clouds or above them since the clouds appear to pass in front of the object at points in the footage and distort our view of the object somewhat. And to me, that is more than enough evidence to say that this thing is at least cloud level. I am making the height assessment based on my own experience having flown in commercial airliners at 30,000 feet before to be above and at times within the clouds, so I would say 15,000 or more feet is a solid and rather conservative estimate. Now, if we account for depth perception, and that would have to be included in this sighting, I would think that for a being to be this large and show up in the middle of a craft like this, the people observing it would have to be looking at something huge, and this craft would have to be likely the same size as a commercial airliner or bigger to show up at this height in the way that it does. That would mean that this supposed single being would have to be an absolute giant. I am not prepared to gamble on a giant alien being being what is inside this craft. There have been reports before of larger alien beings being witnessed by people around 8 feet in height, but this alien would have to likely be about 25 feet tall at the minimum to show up in the way that the dark spot in the middle of the this object did, and I've never heard a report of anyone having come into contact with a being that tall before, so I'm going to say that whatever it is, it's likely not an alien being. I'm not saying that there isn't a possibility that an alien being could be on board the craft, but I don't think that we can clearly see any of them in this footage if there are. I think that it is just another part of this object that is a different color than the rest of the object. Now, do I think this could be a drone? No, not at this height, not unless it's military, and I see no reason for the military to be flying a drone over this particular area. It does not bear any resemblance to a drone that I can see either, but I will say that there may be a slight 1% chance that it is a drone since it is impossible to tell what the military is up to. Now, before we call this something purely extraterrestrial, which I will admit I am on the fence about, I think it is only right that we acknowledge the fact that Arizona contains seven military bases. It has Luke Air Force Base in Glendale, David Monthan Air Force Force Base in Tucson, Barry M. Goldwater Range Air Force Base in Phoenix, which is known for being responsible for half, and do note that I said half of the Phoenix Lights incident. Before you go crazy on me in the comments, please note that they were noted as having dropped flares earlier that night that people indeed did mistake for UFOs, a bit earlier before the actual UFO was spotted in mass. So I'm not saying that there was no UFO, just that some people did mistake the flares for an object before the real one showed up. There is also Fort Huachuca Army Base in Cochise, Yuma Proving Ground Army Base in Yuma County, Camp Navajo Army Base in Flagstaff, and MCAS Yuma Marine Corps Base in Yuma as well. Now, the only really relevant ones are likely going to be the three Air Force bases, but I figured it would probably be good to note that the other four military bases are there as well, since any of them truly could possibly have played a role in what this object might be. We have explained many times in the past that the military has technology far beyond anything that we are allowed to know about, and much of its most secretive tech is likely extraterrestrial in origin. This was confirmed with the fact that Bigelow is housing UFO medals for the United States government. That was just what they allowed us to know, so odds are they are definitely hiding something big in some of these military bases, especially the more secretive ones. History has shown that they tend to separate their findings between bases and keep it on a need-to-know basis for the sake of keeping it under wraps, so it's hard to get a true idea on what they actually have besides what people like Bob Lazar and a few others like Dr. Dan Burish, accredited microbiologist, have claimed to have witnessed at places like Area 51. We have discussed both of them in the past, so feel free to go back and check out the videos we've talked about them in and get yourself up to speed if you don't already know about them and decide what you believe based on the evidence that we have surrounding their claims. If I were to say that what they claim was a fact, I think it would be a major possibility that what we're seeing here could very well be ET in origin, but government owned and operated and being tested out of one of these Air Force installations. However, that seems unlikely to me considering the fact that the area that they are flying over is a heavy tourist zone and it wouldn't exactly be a good idea to fly your secret Black Project ET based crafts over top an area where plenty of people can see it. But then again, this is the government, so it isn't like anything they do makes sense or anything. On top of that, when news sources explain everything away as pareidolia, I guess it would make flying these craft in plain sight totally permissible since the witnesses would just be called crazy and told that what they were seeing was nothing.
nothing, and we already know how all that goes. I think the witnesses here definitely captured something strange, and with the way it looks and behaves, I think it's definitely possible the object may at the very least have origins that are not of this planet. I could be wrong, but that's just my thesis. Let me know what you guys think this thing is. Maybe one of you can debunk it and give an actual explanation that is not the equivalent of just calling us all crazy for acknowledging what is right in front of our very eyes. Anyway, let's move on to our final sighting for today. I originally saw this one shared by my friend Tim over at UFO Man, and if you are not already subbed to him, go check him out. I won't make any promises yet, but there may be a new series coming from us on the horizon that I think you guys will really love, and I would appreciate it if you guys that are new here would go over and throw him a sub. Much like me, YouTube is heavily censoring his channel, and they have shadow banned both of us. I know a lot of YouTubers make this complaint, but seriously, it's true. If you don't believe me, then test it out for yourself. Go to Google, not YouTube. YouTube. It has to be Google and type in the search bar name of my channel and feel free to add in a couple of keywords that you've seen in my video titles before. I'm the biggest channel on the platform with the name Alien Bros and you would think that this channel would be the first thing that pops up. I used to be the first one to pop up on Google. That isn't the case anymore. Just search my channel name on Google and see how long it takes you to find my channel or a single video from my channel in general. You would be lucky if you could find me on there at all. The same goes for UFO Man. Feel free to test it. You'll find that my merch store comes up before my actual channel. It is the same for both of us. The bulk of my views came from Google in the past and I'm sure that the same was true for UFO Man. YouTube knows this and is trying to snuff us out before either of us can become too large to snuff out. I refuse to let that happen. We need your support, and if we want to have any hope of surviving on this platform, I am determined to keep fighting for this channel until the very end. Thank you all. Anyway, the sighting comes to us from Toonball, Texas and was captured on September 13th of 2018. It shows three brightly lit objects performing some incredible aerial maneuvers and disappearing and reappearing out of thin air. They are truly a sight to behold, and I only wish that I could have witnessed them firsthand. What these objects do is absolutely incredible, and I have not managed to yet come up with a real good explanation for them. Go ahead and check out this footage and we can talk more on it afterwards, alright? Here it is. I give my phone. I have my uh, yeah here. Here here. Dude, look, the three lights are back. They're back. And they're moving in unison. Oh. It's just random lights in the sky moving. Like I'm not the only one seeing Dude. three there are other people here watching this. They're oh. recording it. They're just random lights oh. moving disappearing. They're gone again. There they go. Oh my what gosh. Dude, there's some look, the look, look at this. Fuck? Dude, this is our <laughs> full type right now, man. Talking about, look at this right this now. This is fucking sick. Oh this my god, look at this. These three lights, they keep coming together and then they go apart. Watch this. Look at them. 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 Dude, what the hell? There goes one. Now they're back to two lights. Dude, there it goes. There goes one. Boom. All three. All right. <laughs> what is Whoa. that? Whoa. What the fuck is happening? We are all out here in the middle of this parking lot in <laughs> Cobble Creek yes. Apartments. Look at us. All of us here. Oh, shit, man. Oh, There's one. another one. Where? There's one. Oh, they're behind the trees now. Oh, they're behind the trees. Another one behind the tree. This is nuts. What's going on, Avery? Dude, you see Dude, these look shit? at them. They're moving. Look at them. Boom. Over here now. Boom. Dude, this is nuts. Unbelievable. In my opinion, this is definitely some incredible footage. I was blown away the first time that I watched it, and I've continued to be blown away every time I've watched it since. These objects behave in a way that no earthly object that I am aware of can. They look like massive white light fireballs that have tails like comets on them while they swirl about the sky, something you certainly do not see every day. The witnesses of this sighting knew what they were looking at was something incredible. You could tell by their reactions that this left them feeling emotions they probably could not even begin to voice at the time of the sighting. And really, can you blame them? These objects are performing acts that no drone or other terrestrial object that I am aware of is capable of doing, and it's happening right in front of these witnesses who likely have had no prior interest in this subject before this. It's one heck of a way to become a UFO believer. With the admittance of the government though confirming the existence of UFOs, the question of whether you are a believer or not no longer matters when it comes to this phenomenon. The existence of the objects capable of otherworldly feats is no longer a case of do you believe. It is now a case of their existence being a fact. And finding out who they are and what they are up to.
we have seen a lot of these fireball type UFOs, but the ones that perform feats like this are always my favorite ones to come across because they show that these objects are capable of far more than just hovering in the sky. And these objects are clearly very large in size, and they hold an overall triangle shaped formation with some variations in their flight pattern. Whatever these things are, they possess flight capabilities that don't fit the description of any known object I know of, and the way that they disappear and reappear just goes to show that these objects have the ability to camouflage themselves at will and only make themselves visible when they want us to see them. I just want to know why they would want us to see them. I know many people here are advocates for Project Bluebeam. Maybe it has something to do with that. I won't say it does, but maybe you guys could be onto something. I'm more inclined to believe that these objects likely are truly extraterrestrial in origin and that they must have some sort of reason for wanting us to know what they are. If you guys can explain them, then by all means do so, but I'm currently of the opinion that what we are seeing in this footage is likely somehow ET related, until I can find an explanation for them that makes sense and gives me the ability to write them off. Could these lights maybe be a CGI hoax? I highly doubt it. This was witnessed by multiple people that all corroborated the story and the footage under examination does not seem to have been tampered with. Not a pixel out of place. Let me hear what you guys think down in the comments. What do you think that these things are? Are they explainable? Do you think that they're ET or do you have another theory on what these objects could be? I'll say that this is one amazing UFO sighting and props to UFO man for sharing such an awesome piece of footage with us all. Anyway, let's get into the news that I have for you guys today. I'll try not to take too long on it since this video will likely be long enough as it is and I know your time is valuable and you likely have things you need to do. As I'm sure many of you know, there is a mathematical formula that was created in the 60s to determine the amount of intelligent alien beings in our Milky Way galaxy with us. This formula is known as the Drake Equation, named so after the man that created it, Frank Drake. This equation worked by taking the rate of formation of stars suitable for the development of intelligent life, the fraction of those stars with planetary systems, the number of planets per solar system with an environment suitable for life, the fraction of suitable planets on which life actually appears, the fraction of life bearing planets on which intelligent life emerges, the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence into space, and the length of time such civilizations release detectable signals into space, and plugging them all together into one equation which you can now see on your screen. The original answer to this equation was not a solid one, with Frank Drake coming to the conclusion that there could be anywhere between 1,000 and 1 billion and other advanced species living throughout the Milky Way galaxy, or even as few as two others, depending on what modifiers were used and who did them in the past, and based on whatever info was available at the time that the equation was being done. This equation has been improved upon over the years with more private sector scientists learning more about space. With that little lesson in math and history out of the way, we can get into the news topic for today. And that is that scientists at the University of Nottingham have finally modified and refined the equation enough with modern data about our galaxy to get a solid number that they believe is actually the likely answer to said equation. The exact parts modified I am unsure of, but I am sure will be available for them soon enough in a peer-reviewed study on the subject. What I do know, however, is the answer to their equation, and that is 36. They claim that 36 intelligent races, and do note that I did say intelligent as the equation only accounts for intelligent life at least as developed as we are. They would simply need to be able to transmit some sort of signal into space in order to qualify, which means that they could be billions of years more advanced than we are. They claim that the downside of this result, however, is that if these extraterrestrial civilizations were all evenly distributed throughout our galaxy, then we would all be at least 17,000 light years apart from one another. However, to me, that only seems to explain more about what we're likely seeing here on Earth with these UFOs. If these beings really are billions of years more advanced than we are, who is to say that 17,000 light years is an unconquerable distance for them? I would say it may even be considered child's play for such an advanced civilization, and if 36 of them really Really do exist just in our galaxy alone, then I think the odds of at least one of them being advanced enough to visit us are pretty good. Every day we get more info drip fed to us on this topic and we get closer to the truth. I think that we're coming up on a milestone for humanity and very soon we will see the true answer to whether or not we are being visited and I am a firm believer that we certainly are. However, whether you think so or not is for you to decide. This equation certainly makes me hopeful that we are and I think I would be willing to bet it all on black at this point and say that yes, they are here. Our government does know about it, and soon we will all know the truth. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today, but stay tuned because there is a lot more coming and we will have it posted very soon. If you liked the video, then please don't forget to hit that like button on your way out, share it, comment, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. It really helps us out and it'll let you guys stay up to date by sending you a message straight to your inbox every time we upload a video. And you can once again stay on the up and up with all of the latest alternative news. And remember, you have to hit the bell button or YouTube will not notify you when our new videos come out. 
Maybe also bookmark the page because Google seems to be censoring our channel very heavily. We are almost certainly being blacklisted and we need your help to overcome that. If you'd like to help support the work we do here, please feel free to support us on Patreon. We are currently working on setting up new tier lists for our patrons and we think that you guys will really like them. The link is down in the video description. Every little bit that we get helps us out tremendously and we truly are grateful for it. Also, if you have UFO footage or evidence that you would like us to feature on the channel, then please email it over to us. Our email is down in the description as well, and we will get back to you as soon as possible. And for updates on when our new videos are coming out, go follow our Facebook page. The link is down in the video description as well. Together, we will find the truth. Thanks again for your support, guys. It really does mean a lot to us, and don't forget to browse the channel if you're new and get yourself up to speed. Also, be sure to check out UFO Man and our sponsors over at Finally Hair Corporation. We would really appreciate it, and it's a good way to help support the channel and the work that we're doing here. As always, I'm Richard with Alien Bros, and I'll see you guys again next video.